So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a chi-squared test of independence, otherwise known as a chi-squared test of association on Jamovi. So we're normally going to use this test when we have two categorical variables comprised of at least two levels. So for this example, let's imagine that we are interested in the effectiveness of a treatment for anxiety, and we have 20 people represented by zeros here who are in a placebo group and we have 20 people here represented by the number one who are in a treatment group and in this column we also have zeros and ones and so zeros are going to represent people with no anxiety diagnosis and ones are going to represent people with a anxiety diagnosis. So let's take a look at how to enter these data into Jamovi. So I'm just going to select all of the data and then I'll go to Command or Control C to copy those data. I'll then go over to Jamovi and I'll select the top left cell and then I'll press Command or Control V to paste those data in. Once the data are there, we can tell Jamovi a little bit about the variables. So if we go up to data and then down to setup, and then if we select A here, we can give this a name. So let's call this one something like group. And we can see that nominal is already selected in this measures type menu. And that's what we want. So we can just leave that as it is. And then we can use this levels thing here to tell Jamovi what the levels of this variable are. So let's say that's zero equals placebo and let's say that one equals treatment and then if we just press enter we can see that those zeros and those ones are represented are replaced by the words placebo and treatment similarly if we click on this b here we can tell jamovi what this variable is so let's call this something like diagnosis and we can say that zero represents no diagnosis and that one represents diagnosis. And then if we just press enter again, we can see that zero and one are replaced by no diagnosis and diagnosis. So now that we've entered the data, we can run the analysis. So let's go up to analyses and then down to frequencies and then to independent samples. And then you just need to transfer one of your variables to the rows box and one of your variables to the columns box. It doesn't really matter which way around you do this, although it's more common to transfer the variable that you would think of as the independent variable to the rows box, and to transfer the variable you would think of as the dependent variable to the columns box. So once we've done that, let's go down to statistics, and we can see that we have the chi-squared option already selected, so there's nothing to change there. I'm also going to tick this Hi and Kramer's V box so that we get an effect size statistic. Next, I'll go down to cells. So we can see that we have observed counts already selected. And this is just going to tell us how many people did and did not have a diagnosis in each one of the two treatment groups. So for example, we can see that in the placebo group, we had nine people with no diagnosis and we had 11 people with a diagnosis and in the treatment group we had 14 people with no diagnosis and six people with a diagnosis but if we also tick this expected counts box you can see that we have four new numbers appear in this part of the table so we can see that we had 23 people in total with no diagnosis and if there's no association between the two variables, we'd expect these 23 people to be evenly distributed between the placebo and the treatment groups. So we'd expect to see 11.5 people in the treatment group and 11.5 people in the placebo group. Likewise, we have 17 people in total with a diagnosis. And if there's no association between the variables, we'd expect to see 8.5 people, so half of 17 in the treatment group, and 8.5 people, half of 17, in the placebo group. So essentially what the chi-squared test is doing 
is checking whether there's a significant difference between what we would expect if there's no association between the variables and what we did actually see. And one of the assumptions of the chi-square test is that no more than 20% of expected counts are below five. So we're looking at these four values here. So we can see that we have 11.5, 11.5, 8.5, 8.5, so none of these are below five. If one of these was below five, that would be one out of four, so we'd have 25% of expected counts um, below five, which would represent a violation of that assumption. And if you observe that, you might consider ticking this Fisher's exact test box, because that performs a correction that can account for a violation of this assumption. But in this case, that assumption has been met, so I'm not going to take Fisher's exact test. Instead, I'm going to continue down here, so let's get some percentages. I'm just going to get percentages for row, and then lastly, I'll just click on this plots here, and then we can ask for a bar plot. So that generates this plot for us. So as I mentioned, the test is really looking at whether there's a difference between the observed and the expected frequencies and is asking whether there's a significant difference between those. And to determine whether the difference is significant, we need to look at this chi-squared tests table. And the value we're most interested in is this p-value. So if this value is below 0.05, it indicates that there is a significant association between the variables, which is another way of saying that there's a significant difference between the observed and the expected values. So in this case, we can see that the value is above 0.05, indicating that there is not a significant association between the variables. So let's take a look at how we can report these results. So I have this example here. So I've just started off by saying a chi-square test of independence was conducted to examine the association between group and anxiety diagnosis. And then I've referred to that assumption. So I've said that no expected frequencies were below five in line with the assumption that no more than 20% of expected frequencies should be below five. I've then just gone on to report the results of the chi-squared test itself. So I've said that there was not a significant association between group and anxiety diagnosis. And then I've included some statistics from that output. So let's start off with this one here. So we've got the chi-squared symbol here, and we've said chi-squared equals 2.56, so that's just coming from this chi-squared test table. And specifically, we're looking at this value column and at the chi-squared row, and we can see that the value is 2.56. We've also reported a degrees of freedom value, this one, and we've reported an n value. So that's just the total number of participants in the study. And we've said that that is 40. And we can see that those values come from here. So here's the one, the degrees of freedom value in this chi-squared test table, and here is the value of 40 in this contingency table up here. Next we have the p-value, p equals 0 0.110, and that's coming from the chi-squared test table, p is 0 0.110. And lastly, for this sentence we have with a small effect size, and then I've reported Kramer's v equals 0.25. And so Kramer's V is in this nominal table. Kramer's V is 0 0.253. And in the results here, I've just reported that to two decimal places. And lastly, I've just reported some descriptives. So I've said that among those in the placebo group, 11 had an anxiety diagnosis and nine did not. And I've included these percentages here. So let's just take a look at where those come from. So we're looking at the placebo group and we have 11 in the observed row so 11 people had a diagnosis and nine people did not have a diagnosis and we can see that 11 equals 55 percent and nine equals 45 percent so those are the values included in this part of the sentence or in the sentence and likewise i've said among those in the treatment group six which is 30 percent had an anxiety diagnosis and 14, which is 70%, did not. And as before, that comes from this contingency tables bit of the output. And we can see in the treatment section of the table, six people had an, a diagnosis, which is 30%, and 14 
people did not have a diagnosis, which is 70%. So that's really how we report the results. I just want to show you one more thing, which is how to interpret this Kramer's V value. So here I've said that it represents a small effect size because I had a value of 0.25, and that's based on these thresholds that are commonly used for interpreting Kramer's V. So in this note, I've said that values between 0.1 and 0.3 reflect small effects, values between 0.3 and 0.5 reflect medium effects, and values above 0.5 reflect large effects. So here we have a value of 0.25, this is between 0.1 and 0.3, which is why I've described that as a small effect. So that is basically it for the chi-squared test of independence on Jamovi. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will try to get back to you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.